Good morning, YouTube. It's about 6 a.m. Eastern time. And uh, just wanted to bring another video to you guys. One of my subscribers reached out to me and had the idea of uh, not only just showing the bits, but showing how the bits relate in the real world and how they look when you use the bit on a piece of material. And also to, to kind of discuss about gapping and for vinyl to vinyl or vinyl when it relates to uh, using bits in an automotive 12 volt uh, way. So here's my video. I'm gonna make it real quick before I get started for the day. Hope you guys enjoy it. And as always, thanks for checking in, liking and subscribing and following. Thank you. All right, so these are some of the bits that I use. Um, this is a tray here. I use a lot of my uh, chamfer bits in here and I do have one large rabbiting bit, but this is the Monster 45, the Monster 30, I'm sorry, the Monster 60, the Monster 30, and the XLR rabbiting bit. And I have other smaller uh, variants of those bits. And I use them a lot to give me a lot of different profiles and add little shape and dimension to a lot of the profiles and pieces I do build uh, to kind of give it some life. I don't really like building a lot of flat, um, lifeless, uh, thing and I like kind of you know give it some character so a lot of these bits come in handy to try to give uh, that sense of uh, dimension and the layering and uh, transitions from layer to layer etc so let me get to a little further more detail uh, I know we talked earlier about gapping for vinyl to vinyl so I'm gonna probably jump into that first and then once I'm done explaining that and I will uh, do some demo cuts and kind of show you how the cuts look on a piece of uh, wood. All right, so getting into the conversation of gapping for vinyl or vinyl to vinyl or carpet, etc. Each material has a tolerance. Uh, the easiest way, in my opinion, to find that tolerance is by getting a set of digital calipers. Uh, this particular uh, digital caliper is from eye gauging. Uh, it is a 12 inch version. And I will leave a link in the description below on uh, where you can get these uh, products from. And this is another tool from eye gauging that I'll talk about later. Uh, yeah, each, like this is a piece of vinyl, your standard size vinyl. And what you can do on your uh, digital calipers, uh, most can go to inches, millimeters, and uh, you know, you can do, you know, fractions and whatever. So normally what I'll do is I will take the piece of vinyl and I will load it into the caliper's arms and then I will go to fractions. And as you see, it's 132, which is about the average uh, tolerance for vinyl, right? And then if you wanna double that, let's say you have two pieces of vinyl you should be left with 1 16th, which there it is, 1 16th. So, easy way to, uh, when you have the bits, like for instance, this is the CPR bit, and uh, I use these so much, I can just kind of feel, this one is probably the 1 16th, and this is probably the 132 just by rubbing on it. Yeah. So <clears throat> what you can also do is uh, take your calipers. Because all these bits right here are all the same. The big difference is the bearing offset. So what you can do is let me zero these out. Take this, and you're left with 0 0.625, which we know um, oops, is your tolerance for a 116 cut. Oops. So that you know that that is a vinyl to vinyl cut. 
So that's uh, 116 in a decimal form is gonna leave you with 0 0.625. So that's another way that you can, uh, you know, check the tolerance for your bit. So, you know, you, all, you, all you gotta do is look, it should be 0 0.0625. You know that that's a uh, 1 16th in a decimal form. All right. All right, get to the fun stuff. So right now I'm setting my height using my uh, gauging tool. Got to where I want. Perfect. Lock it up. Move on to the next one. All right, so this is what we're left with. We've got our 30 over here, our 45 here, and our 22.5 here. So this is the 22.5. You can see that it's not uh, anything drastic. Very, uh, maybe we can just wood here. We can get a better view of the wood. All right. It's nothing very drastic, real minute. That's what you get with the 22.5. Something like this is if you want to wrap a piece, you could possibly stack another piece. Like for instance, if you had this, uh, here's the 45. And this is the 45, the trusted 45. You can't go wrong with a nice 45 degree chamfer. Something cool you might want to do is possibly if you had a template and you were to actually chamfer this 45 down, you could possibly go from 45 and then drop down to the 22.5. That could possibly give you some nice shape, good dimension. Um, of course, you'd have to have a template on top of this piece here so that you could ride that 45 down to the uh, end here. And it will literally be a seamless transition from that 45 here. It'd be a seamless transition from that 45 into that 22.5. Uh, tricks like that can get you some really nice dimension in some of your uh, woodworking and fabrication. And then we have the 30 down here. Really, really nice. I like using the 30 bit, 30 degree chamfer bit a lot. It's really nice. It's not quite as sharp as the 45, but it's also not quite as dull as the 22.5, so kind of right in the middle. I do a lot of work with the uh, 30 degree chamfer a lot, especially in stack fabbing, because when you stack two pieces and you get them all meat, it gives a crazy, uh, crazy, crazy shape. Something that, uh, you know, we're used to seeing the 45 stack chamfer, but when you stack chamfer that 30, it's a look that you just really can't duplicate. Only negative side of stack fabbing 30 is you gotta really tuck your material in first and then pull out. Because if you lay your material flat and then try to push in, uh, depending on that shape, you, well, I'm not gonna say might, you more than likely won't get it to tuck all the way into your piece and wrapping it will be uh, a disaster. Not saying it can't be done, but generally uh, you won't be left with a, a really good result unless you're extremely good at wrapping. And even some of the most experienced people at wrapping, that 30 degree stack chamfer can be a nightmare. So yeah, hopefully uh, this video has helped. Um, maybe if I have more time, I'll do more bits. Or maybe I'll do three at a time. I'll do chamfers, I'll do rabbits, uh, sculpting bits things like that so if you you know any other suggestions you guys want i will uh get up early before i get started and knock these videos out for you 
But yeah, this is the 30 degree chamfer bit. This is the infamous 45 degree bit chamfer. This is actually one of my very first bits that I bought was the 45 degree. So a lot of my early work, if you were to ever look back, you're gonna see a lot of the 45 degree chamfer. But I still use it now as well. So it's not like I don't use it. I like chamfers and um, a various uh, degrees with the 45 degree, 30 degree, 22 degree. And I have other ones. I have a 15 uh, degree and I have a 60 degree. I mean, I have all the uh, chamfer bit set. So, but yeah, if there's any other questions, if there's something that I didn't explain or you want further clarification, feel free to message me. I'll leave a comment below and I'll try to answer it and possibly make a video on it as well. So hope you guys enjoy it. And uh, like again, have a great day. I'm about to get my day started now. Uh, take care and have a blessed week.